what is the red pill? What, I mean, because we're, we're, we're the red man group, right? So we have to sort of understand, we have to let people know what red pill means to us. Right. Uh, I, I think that when we, gosh, what was it? Probably about three or four months ago, we had a lot of these guys from the quote unquote purple pill uh, hitting oh, us up all the time saying, you don't know what the red pill is. You don't know what the, and it's like, no, you guys have just basically taken what we, you know, the, the core work, what we've done, and then sort of built on that to uh, facilitate your own blue pill ideals, your own blue pill idealism. That's why we call it the purple pill, which is another thing we should probably define. Yes. Uh, yes. So anyways, just um, to me, I'll just, I'll just start here. I, to me, the red pill is always going to be about intersexual <clears throat> dynamics. Uh, I was telling you guys before we came on, um, back in the day when I was a moderator at So Suave, I can show you the posts from about 2002 where we were making matrix references and we were talking about the red pill, but it wasn't the way we would talk about it right now. It was, uh, we took a lot of what was going on with the pickup artist community back then and game, and we were kind of parsing it out uh, in psychological terms, uh, at least I was. Uh, evolutionary psychology terms, evo bio terms, uh, and it seemed to to me at the time that once you become aware of sexual dynamics and how things really are, it's a lot like unplugging yourself from the matrix. So that's why we started calling it the red pill. And I think in recent times, a lot of people have taken the red pill as a term and sort of bastardized it. They've used it to mean a truth, like you're cut you're cut away from this false. Uh, this false narrative, or you're cut away from, you know, your what I call your blue pill conditioning. It's, I, it's, it's struck me that a lot of guys are conditioned from a very early age to sort of make themselves not to not make themselves their mental point of origin, and to make women and womankind their mental point of origin. And from there, it's built upon so that by the time these guys get to be about 29 or 30, they make, you know, they have been you know, molded and shaped into this, what I call a beta in waiting. And so these guys, you know, end up living this lifestyle uh, based on what I call the old set of books. Uh, really, it's the old social contract uh, that they expect women to appreciate or recognize, and they never really do. And so I think more and more people are, are more and more guys are becoming really red pill aware uh, on their own these days, because the red pill and open hypergamy is something that is just openly flaunted right now. And so it's kind of hard not to be a uh, red pill unless you really got your head stuck up your ass. So I, to me, red pill is always going to mean intersexual dynamics, but a lot of guys will call it like, like, you know, alt-right, like to say, I got red pilled about this, or I got red. It's like red pill is yeah. not a, it's not a verb. Okay. It's not, don't I'm getting, I'm red pilling people. No. It, it, huh. because it, it's convenient for these guys. It's convenient to say, well, red pill is this and it's whatever I believe ideologically. So that must be red pill, right? Because I'm right and these people are wrong. And so therefore I must be red pill. And I don't see it that way. Um, I see it as a cutting away from your old understanding of things. And maybe you can, I mean, maybe, maybe you can make an argument for, uh, for that in social terms. But to me, if, if I'm referring to the red pill, it's always about intersexual dynamics. What, what, what would you define the red pill, Ryan? Honestly, I love this. Uh, it's a post from Keone Galt, Hawaiian libertarian back in 2012. And I think he puts it the best I've ever seen where he talks about uh, how guys think they're in this weird paradox situation where they have no choice. Women are all gold digging whores because 70% of them divorce guys or... <sighs> that husbands are emasculated and they can't talk to their wives because everything is a bad, a bad communication style. And he just puts a like, game is red pill. It's you got to understand why things are happening the way they're happening. And I think he, he doesn't go into Evo psych the way you would, but I'm going to post it into the chat. And I really suggest if anybody really wants to know this and then a book from Ian Ironwood called Manosphere. It's probably the best history lesson you'll see on the whole thing here. And the way he puts it is just, it's a, a grievance and problem solving based from the pickup community's evolution over the years. Hmm. So yeah, men aren't happy. Men have issues. And he brings it all the way back to the Second World War. It's really a fascinating read. It's a bit of a lengthy one though. Hmm. To the point where the kind of the guilt after the horrors of the Second World War has kind of created a cultural meme where all the good things that men have created over the years doesn't make up for the amount of suffering that they've caused. And so it's 
And then at the end of this stuff, it just means that guys aren't happy. Guys aren't getting what they want. Guys don't even know what they want. And they've been, I don't want to say taught because it's not purposeful. It's just the way things are kind of evolving to be guilty for being men. And so this is just a way of going back. And I find it funny that it was a bunch of pickup artists peacocking in the nineties yeah. have figured out once they started getting older, realizing, Oh, this stuff I was using to pick up girls also seems to help us in other avenues and yeah i think a lot, of, a lot of people don't don't really get i got a um there's a chapter in the first in the, my first book it's called the history of game and you can also find that on my on my blog and i kind of delve into how pickup artistry and game evolved into what we have today as far as what we would consider the manosphere and i think a lot of people who want to you know shit on on pickup artists don't really realize the the, the ground that they broke now now when people look when people think about pickup artistry today i think they still sort of think of like uh mi mystery yeah they, yeah mystery myth or they think of oh i gotta wear a top hat and elevator boots and are you from tennessee mail. because you're the only 10 i see yeah that, that <laughs> kind of shit and right. so and, and you got to understand that that book like the the game the book was that book was written in 2000 well it came out in 2005 so it was probably written about 2003 so, I mean, we're talking a long ass time ago and a lot has changed since then, but people keep coming back to that and like shitting on pickup artists because they think that, oh, well, these guys are just ridiculous and things are, things are different, but they don't realize that just the fact that, you know, like these guys who are in like the married red pill or the guys who are uh, coming back to this sort of, you know, uh, what, what you're writing about, Ryan, where it's this, this uh, moralistic kind of masculinity, they don't realize that the reason that they're even able to do that is because these pickup artists built a community and that community evolved into something that they could finally you know feel a part of and here's the uh, funny part think about this those same guys will talk about how young is wonderful and great and mbti yes. is good but yes. pickup artists is old antiquated stuff yeah <laughs> throwing that out there uh, well, I, I I see it as this way. I mean, people want to say, well, in fact maybe we should define this what is game uh, I see game as sort of the practice or the physical, you know, going out there and applying and experimenting with red pill theory. So I think of red pill as the theory and I think of game as the practice now. So if I say, here's, here's what hypergamy is about and here's what, uh, you know, here's what plate spinning is about and here's, here's why peacocking works. Here's why amused mastery works. Go out there and try this, right? And so they go out and they try that and they go, oh, hot damn, I can't believe I, you know, I have a different relationship with women now, or I understand women a little bit better. And so my interactions, even just having that in the back of your head, having the theory of red pill in the back of your head and you're interacting with women and you'll see changes in how women behave towards you. And then you go, holy shit, these guys are right. You know, and they'll, from there, they kind of progress. But if you're going to ask me what is game, game is the practice and red pill is the theory. What do you think, uh, Donovan? <clears throat> yeah, to me, the red pill is, um, I mean, I'm not as, you know, I don't have as much psychological uh, depth as you guys. But to me, uh, the red pill is is simply under, not only understanding a woman's true nature, but being man enough or having the balls to act on what you know. Because here's the thing, I think a lot of men know and understand red pill truth just by virtue of being a man. All you have to do is look around or or just live life. And men know that there's an, like, uh, there's an undercurrent among men. They know sexual relations between men and women is fucked up. They know this, but they're afraid to they're afraid to acknowledge the fact that it is because of feminism. They're afraid to acknowledge the fact that to be attractive to women isn't what we've been taught. It's not, to be attractive to women is not politically correct. The red pill is ugly, man. And the red pill does not go down easy. Um, it's, it's again, it, it, there, I, dude, I could talk about what the red pill is, what it means to me and all, and, and what it really is. But, but basically in, in, in my, you know, in, in, in my vein, like in my area, to me, the red pill is understanding a woman's true nature and then acting on what you know as someone with red pill awareness. Because like I said, a lot of guys could tell you bitches ain't shit. Blue pill aware or not, red pill aware, blue pill, whatever. They know bitches ain't shit. But are you man enough to take action? Are you man enough that when a girl comes up and asks you to buy her a drink, you say, sure, right after you buy me one, right? Like, are you, like, like, are you red pill enough? Like, are you man enough to take a woman's phone on the first date if she's playing on her phone? Not now, sweetheart. You're on my time. Like, are you man enough to do that? And I think, and, and listen, no guy is okay with a, with a girl texting on her phone on the first date. 
No guy is afraid of that. But I'm the guy who's going to say, listen, sweetheart, put away your phone. And if she's, nah, 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 uh, yeah, check, please. I've done this on multiple occasions. Oh, my God, you're going to miss the lay. You know what? Then so fucking be it, man. I'm not going to deal with disrespect from women. And I know I'm getting all into that. But as far as what game is concerned, I think a lot of people misconstrue game, men and women alike, as sort of a canned, um, a canned disingenuous way to sleep with pretty girls. And there's a term out there that says fake it, you know, fake it till you make it. And I guess that's kind of half true. But really, to me, game is kind of a I think it's just a term that we put on it. All game is really is just being attractive to women, knowing what to say, knowing what responses, knowing what responses make her more attracted to you, make knowing what makes her more aroused. Um, be, listen, being a man, having backbone. And I think no man can really learn game. A man has to change his lifestyle. And if a man changes his lifestyle, we know all the basics, get fit, you know, learn how to deal with women, stack your cash, confidence, all that other kind of stuff. And as a natural byproduct of your lifestyle, you then in essence have game and women respond more favorably to you. So again, to sum things up here, to me, the red pill is one thing, but being man enough, being masculine enough to act on what you know to be true uh, that to me is the true definition of being red pill aware. Carl, you want to chime in? I can't hear him. Yeah, I can't hear him. Either. Really, really, you're really, really faint, Carl. You're faint, Carl. Okay, it's faint. Oh, there you okay, go. It's probably there we go. Uh, <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, don't wake her up, Carl. Mike, I was using. <laughs> no, I. Uh, yeah, no, what I was saying, well, I think it's amazing that you're red-pilling people about being red-pilled. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was going to say it's, it's all about... Okay. Go ahead, Carl. No, I was going to say it started with the pickup artist, right? And I think if you want to know what the red pill is, just look at the history of it, because you can kind of see it developing, because there's a very logical evolution from just these observing guys who are naturally good with women in the field dialing that down into hypotheses and then testing them in the field to see, okay, what effects do I get if I do this? I mean, you go back to one of my old favorites, um, Styles Opinion Opener, for instance. It's a brilliant thing that draws women in and it works because you're piquing curiosity, given the impression that you're not going to take up a lot of their time. It feels like a natural interaction. So it doesn't, they don't get that you're hitting on them immediately. Because it's kind of an innocent thing just asking someone a question and people will naturally try and ask and answer if you ask them a question. It's why if you know these pushy salesmen that hang around malls and on the street, they will often ask open with, hey, do you have 20 seconds or can I just ask you something real quick? Because that draws people in and it brings down your defenses that are normally up. If someone just walked up to you randomly, you have like a defensive wall up in public. And right. when you right. ask that question, you kind of disarm it. Hmm. Yeah, see, I, the, I think the, the best thing to get over. Go ahead, Carl. To get over approach anxiety is just walk up to random people and go, uh, excuse me, do you have the time? Oh, yeah, the time opener. Because it, it, yeah. I remember, I remember back in the day, back in uh, on the so swap days, we had this thing. What was it called? Like the DJ boot camp or something like that. I think uh, that's what it was called. It's like we and th we seriously had to like t tell guys, you know, you need to make eye contact. You know, these guys were like, we'd have people who who just didn't understand even like the the basics of like what game, like what what Carl's talking about, just the basics of game because they're so used to being, I don't know, socially isolated. I guess so you had to teach them actually to to you know engage to even to even talk i i think a lot of one a lot of the appeal i think of red pill is i think a, a lot of guys sort of see it as their their cure for kind of social awkwardness and i think that that needs to be something that needs to be addressed at some point like because like I'm, I'm not going to be able to if you if you have like autism or if you have some kind of like you have asperger's syndrome or if you have some sort of like really you know clinically you know, wrong thing with you as far as that's concerned. Uh, I mean, red pill probably, prob yeah, it's going to push you into some really uncomfortable situations. Maybe that's good for you, but maybe that's bad for you too. So uh, I'll, I'll do you one up on this too. I was thinking like, you're talking about how the nerdier guys, they kind of learn how to act social and have some EQ, I guess. But here's the thing that I found that really separates red pill from say pickup. Mm -hmm. um, I call them the fallen alphas, which I referred to last year. 
It's Ooh. guys who naturally caught this stuff. They were naturals. There's even ah, one right. Right now, ARZD. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. When the naturals run into a situation they haven't run into before, maybe they get into Whoa. an accident, they get start getting over out of weight, out of shape. Wives start acting different than they're used to. At this point, they've been flying on autopilot, so they don't really know the reasons why. And then once they saw these guys here who had to learn it from scratch and articulate the reasons, it kind of meshed these two groups together, the, I hate to use it, the alpha male and the beta male, and they realized these, these negative outcomes, they're not because you're socially awkward. They can happen to anybody. And so it's an awareness thing that I think really elevated it past the pickup community, and I think it's why it's better than MGTOWs or MRAs because, I mean, it's practical for mm -hmm. all walks of life. It's something you can get. You know, I yeah, look at, I look at game like this. Hold on, Donovan. I look at game like this. I and I've said this before in a few different posts. I think everybody has a game, a game of some sorts. If you ask like even a ten-year-old kid on the street, you say, "What's the best way to to meet a girl and to make her your girlfriend?" That kid is going to go through this whole, you know, well, you got to be nice to her. You got to carry her books home from school. You got to do, you know, if that that kid has a pre conception of how best to go about going from being single to having a girlfriend. Now that kid might not be able to tell you how successful he is. Um, and like I said, everybody might have a game. Like I say, Hey, you know, even betas have game because they think that, you know, they think that their blue pill conditioning or they think that their blue pill ideologies is what's going to get them from point A to point B. So they do have a game, but the question is, how effective is that game? Everybody you know has some kind of concept as to how to best go about, uh, you know, getting together with a girl or with a woman or a man. And I think that the the what we put into practice is really kind of our game. But how effective that game is is really what is, you know, what is that issue? I think. Go ahead, Donna. Yeah, well, I was going to chime in. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, I've known him since I was a teenager, tall, good looking guy, blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, every Anglo slut's dream. Whenever it's funny, whenever we used to go places together, girls would literally just flock to him because he's tall, he's good looking. I didn't realize, listen, this is funny. I didn't realize he was a good looking guy truly until my sister said he was. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. I'm like, are you kidding me? So that's when I figured it out. But here's the thing. Guys who are born with, and and I don't want to say it's natural game, but but men who are born with natural markers of hyper masculinity, tall, square jawed, blah, 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 they think girls are wonderful because they don't usually get fucked over by women. And if they do, there's three more to replace them. They have the ultimate abundance mentality. But these men have no idea what it really, really takes to truly arouse women other than what they've been naturally given. And I've said this before, is that guys who have lower outer markers of sexual market value have far tighter game than men who have that high sexual market value. And I'll point out a racial difference black guys and white guys. White guys are at the top of the sexual food chain. I don't care what anybody says. Most women prefer white guys. This is how it is. And a lot of guys ask, well, how do, why do black guys have such tight game? Well, black guys have tight game because we have to. When when I approach a white girl, I know chances are, dude, most women don't prefer black guys. As, as much as people think, oh my God, all these girls out here fucking all these niggas. No, like that's not how it is. So as a black man who doesn't fuck with black women, my game had to be ultra tight in order to sleep with white girls. And I had to approach a lot more because I already know I'm going in as a, at a deficit. Am I mad at that? No, man. I'm Listen, I'm playing the, I'm playing the hand that I've been dealt. I know that when I go in, chances are she's probably not going to be into me. But maybe if my game is tight enough, maybe if I'm attractive enough, maybe if I can build that connection strong enough with what little time I have, maybe I can, maybe I can, maybe I can get in there. And with regards to PUAs, no disrespect to pickup artists because those guys know how to slay. But here's the difference between a pickup artist and a man with red pill awareness. Pickup artists know how to get, they get more ass than a toilet seat, but there's a big difference between getting ass and keeping ass. Listen, any man, any man, red pill aware, PUA game or not, can get lucky on any given night, right? Like, I mean, dude, any man can can get lucky and fuck a seven, eight, a nine, or a 10. Maybe you look like her ex-boyfriend. Maybe she's ovulating that day. Maybe the moon is right. It's a confluence of events and anybody can get lucky on one night. 
But the true red pillars, the, the, the guys with true masculinity who know what who know what the fuck is up, fucking girls and stay fucking them. That's what separates to, to me the men from the boys. Yeah, I was gonna say is that you don't necessarily have like people always think that if you are a pickup artist that and you're and you're a good one, like you're an MPM in PUA, you know. If, that's that you have to be red pill that you have to right. have some red pill awareness i will tell you right now that if you if you look at some of the guys in rsd i have no doubt that some of the guys <laughs> oh here we honestly, go <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna talk shit <laughs> um a lot of the a lot of i have seen in you know in real time i've seen these guys pick up chicks that are that are you know honest to god really good looking chicks that they they have game they can do that but then you go and you look at them like you look at a guy like uh mystery mystery is entirely blue pill kills it in game kills it as a pickup artist but still is clinging to those blue pill ideals and that's why he's suicidal that's why he, and has been so for a very long time uh you look at a guy like uh owen from rsd uh, tyler oh, whatever yeah, you, call. Yeah. you look at that guy he's got you know he's got two kids uh single you know with a single mother or something like that. i can't remember you know he's in a situation where he's like you know the leader of you know a quote-unquote game you know the, the biggest game community in the world but yet you look at what these guys, what the decisions these guys make, and look at the outcome and the results. You can say that these guys are not very red pill. They 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 understand like how to make things work, like how to drive the car, but they don't understand how what's under the hood. They don't know know how to build the car. They don't know how to uh, you know fix the car if something is broken. They just know how to drive the car. And so I, I think that that's another misnomer that sort of needs to be addressed here in you know Red Pill 101 is that just because you are good at game does not necessarily make you Red Pill or does not that's necessarily right. make you Red Pill that's aware. Right. A lot of listen, a lot of guys get a lot of guys can go right out the door and fuck a bunch of chicks. That doesn't make you an alpha male. That doesn't make you Red Pill aware. Well, that that part you were talking about where naturals naturals don't a natural guy I and mean, what we like to consider as a natural, uh, those guys don't have any incentive. To really no, look for, not. to really understand anything beyond what works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. So they don't have any idea to to actually think about fixing it. They don't have. They have a whole lot less insight, and which is also, I should say, uh, a parallel to uh, women who are very attractive themselves. They ha they have very little incentive for insight. So you, you know, the better looking a girl, the more vapid and the more you know uh, self absorbed she she tends to be. Why? Because she's never had any you know, motivation to think anything different. You know, there's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it.